Greetings, and welcome to another episode of Sports 101, the show that discusses sport beyond the X's and O's. We like to expand our conversation, include the history and the past, the present, as well as in the making, and also look at the game from a people, places, and cultural perspective. I'm your host, Jamar Hart. Be sure to follow me on social media at Coach underscore Hart 412 and Facebook under Jamar Hart. Please get social with Sports 101 and the litany of other shows on Sports Zone Chicago, the world's only Black-owned sports talk app, by following Sports Zone Chicago on social media. Sports Zone Chicago can be found on Twitter at Sports Zone CHI, Facebook at Sports Zone Chicago, and Instagram at Sports Zone Chicago. Remember, Sports Zone Chicago is a sports talk app. You can watch and listen to your favorite team, keep up with breaking sports news. And if you miss something, you're at work or out with the kids, don't worry about it. Just go to YouTube and search Sports on Chicago. Now, after you do that and you subscribe to the YouTube channel, Sports on Chicago, we need everyone, I mean everyone, to download the Sports on Chicago app. The Sports on Chicago app can be found on the iTunes, Google Play, and uh, Amazon stores. Now, I'd like to talk to you about this week's episode. <clears throat> Excuse me. Get my picture, which is. Title 463, Major League Baseball's only African-American double play duo. Now, the two gentlemen you see pictured right here is the battery for the uh, Chicago White Sox, the infield battery or second base and shortstop, who will be the focus of today's show. <clears throat> now, when watching a baseball game and a double play occurs, you will hear the announcer explain, well, what type of double play is this? Sometimes it can be a 6-4-3 or even a 4-6-3 double play. So let me show you what he's talking about. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if you look at this chart right here, you'll see all the positions numbered in baseball. And if you ever took score or played baseball, this will be familiar with you. So you see one starts at the pitcher, two is a catcher, three is first base, four is second base. Uh, you have five at uh, – third base, six at shortstop, seven in left field, eight in center, and nine in right. So if I had a six, four, three double play, obviously the ball's hit to the shortstop, who goes to the second baseman, who's covering second base, who then fires off to the first baseman to get the uh, batter out. The same would be opposite if it was a four, six, three double play where the ball will be hit to the second baseman and six or the shortstop will cover second base who then would throw the first to um, disqualify the batter. <clears throat> now, Josh Harrison right here, who is the second baseman, um, he's a journeyman, um, used to play for my hometown team, the Pittsburgh Pirates. And uh, Tim Anderson right here, the shortstop, on only second uh, base and shortstop, duo of African-Americans in the entire Major League Baseball. So to get you more acquainted with these guys, I want to show you a quick video on the plurals of Josh Harrison. You can check him out, and then we'll look at um, our next player. It's off to Harlan. Look at Flaherty. Take it the other way, and it's stabbed. Love to take advantage of it. And Josh Harrison will. 4 nothing ball game. You. That ball is absolutely cranked. See you later. Number nine spot, the other hit. Harrison puts a charge into that one to deep center and beyond the reach of Carlson. The Nats get a bad break as it bounces into the batter's eye. Up the middle, Harrison, right across his body, and Bell picks it. Josh Harrison, a big swing. Gritchick moving back on it, at the wall, and it's gone. He was incredible. They couldn't hit him that day. Josh Harrison, line drive to deep left, Sierra back, and it's off the wall. Josh Harrison has a three-hit day. And Obviously been drilled in the hand a ton. Yeah. Probably suffered a frack. I mean, he's swinging the bat nice. To deep center. And, and Pache will oh. watch it off the wall. And Harrison is going to slide into second with a leadoff double. 
That ball is hammered to left. See you later. Pitch up. There's some turf. There we go. For Josh Harrison. It's 11 to nothing. That ball rocked to right. Right down the line. Turner picking up Bob Henley as he approaches third. Front door lined hard to the gap. Right to the 368 mark. Ball looks findable at the bottom of the ivy. It can disappear in there. Usually that. And that's going to bring in another run. Out to right center. Making the turn. Castro heading for third. Big round to the bag by the RBI guy. There's the target away. Harrison. Deep left center. See you later. All right, now you saw some of the prowess, not only hitting, but fielding of Josh Harrison. Now let's talk a little bit about his story. Um, Josh Harrison is a 34-year-old second baseman for the Chicago White Sox who hails uh, from, <clears throat> excuse me, southwestern Ohio. Um, he's a former Cincinnati Bearcat. Um, his senior season at the University of Cincinnati, he batted 378 and was a Big East co-player of the year. Um, after that, he was drafted by the other team in Chicago in the sixth round of the 2008 Major League Draft. Um, after his draft, Harrison excelled in his first year, destroying competition on the multiple levels of single A baseball. He started at the uh, minus A base, minus A level. He then moved up to the A level and then also um, destroyed the A plus level in his first year. In 2009, he was traded to the Pittsburgh Pirates and he made his Major League debut debut for the Pirates in 2011. Um, fast forward three years later, um, Harrison was selected uh, as a Major League Baseball All-Star in 2014, along with fellow Pittsburgh Pirate outfielder Andrew McCutcheon. Um, after stops with the Tigers, Phillies, Nationals, and Oakland A's, Harrison signed with the White Sox on March 5th of this year for around $5.5 million. Now I'd like to take you to um, a video of his counterpart, uh, White Sox shortstop, Tim Anderson. Does play. Tim loads this one up right center field. Trout is back. Trout at the wall. He leaps and he has to duck. This ball is up and out of here and get the pasta ready. Tim Anderson. Go For the first pitch of baseball today from Fenway. And Tim swings to fly it to right center. Kike Hernandez. Watch as it go! Tim Anderson's first home run ever came at Fenway, and now on the first pitch. Tim in the air right field. Way back there. It is a grand slam! Pasta for everybody! Bring them all home in a 5 nothing lead. They have been largely staying. Tim at shortstop from the grass. Oh, he got him. A howitzer from short and one gone. Well, it's hard to believe that Tim was playing that deep at shortstop. None retired, however. I retired instead. Tim slides into a throw and he's got the out. He knew he had time. He knew the personnel and one gone. Tremendous play by Tim Anderson knowing that there's a catcher running and knowing that you do have some time. Tim to right field. Fair ball into the corner it goes. Let it kick around. Garcia's home. Madrigal follows. Tim's on his way to third. It is the third out of the inning. On 1-1, Tim gives it a ride. Center field, it is gone. Tim's wanted that one for a while. His first homer is since May the 13th. And the Sox with a solo home run barrage. Tim, it's short. Tough pick. And... Oh! Oh, wow! Leori got over there. Tim fed it to him. Does 
numbers in day games for T.A. Oh, that was right there in the hit me zone. Into center field and a leadoff single for Tim Anderson in front of Gordon. Tim on a slider deposits it in right center field and T.A. is two for two. Inside with a cutter, Tim leaps and makes the catch. What a grab by T.A. Lance Lynn certainly happy with that. Looked like it was going to be a looper to left center. Tried to get in on a changeup, and that was a bad idea. Tim Anderson, three for three. Hamilton scores, and Tim's into second base. Four for four for Tim Anderson. Tim to right, on a line, well struck to the wall and off the wall. One run home. Gavin Sheets coming as well, and that is a two-run double for Tim Anderson. Through the right side. Tim Anderson gives the Sox the lead. 5-4 in the eighth in front of 36,000. Where you just go, you know what? Two days a week, you're going to catch, you're not going to hit. Because he's so good with a glove. Tim will try to throw him out, and he got him. What a play. What an arm to get Dozier. Here's first pitch to Tim Anderson is hit well out to right field. Greg Dykeman's out there and he watches it fly. Oh boy. Check the flags. It could be one of those nights. Wind is blown out at Wrigley and one pitch into it. It's one nothing White Sox. From the 24 year old Bo Burrows from Texas as Anderson pulls it to left and what a way to start just like yesterday at Wrigley for Tim Anderson. They tried to get the ball inside. That's the scouting report. You can jam him. Anderson hits it in the air to right. Back at the wall, and the White Sox win it! Anderson drives it into left center field. Kiermeyer's back, it's gone. Tim ties the. All right, thank you again. I'm Jamar Harp, and this is Sports 101, um, the show that discusses sport beyond the X's and O's. As you can see from the Tim Anderson videos, besides the style of play and how uh, hard he plays, um, I want everyone to take an emphasis on, I guess, what they call the flamboyant or uh, pizzazz he puts in the flare when he hits the ball, runs the bases, etc. All that is frowned upon by baseball and is opposite of baseball culture, which we will focus on later on in the show. Uh, back to Tim Anderson. Tim Anderson is a 28-year-old 20, shortstop for the Chicago White Sox. Uh, Tim Anderson hails from Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and growing up, uh, originally he was attracted to basketball and baseball. However, his sophomore year of high school, he fractured both his legs playing baseball. And after that, excuse me, basketball. And after that, he started to focus on baseball. Um, not getting a big scholarship out of uh, high school. Um, Anderson went on to East Central Community College in uh, Mississippi. And after starring there, uh, he was offered a scholarship at UAB, but he turned that down and was selected in the first round of the 2013 Major League Draft by the Chicago White Sox. Now he made his major league debut for the White Sox in 2016 after three short years in the majors. Um, after that, Anderson has led the American League in batting average. Um, he did that in 2019. He won the Silver Slugger Award last year in 2000, well, excuse me, in 2020. And last year was a, a 2021 All-Star. Uh, White Sox shortstop Tim Anderson is the new second baseman. Uh, Josh Harrison, when 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 they when they took the field together, excuse me, um, on Jackie Robinson uh, day in April, again they were the only black double play combination in baseball. Um, Anderson was quoted as saying, "As you don't see that every day, uh, there's a lot of young kids that look up to not only him, but uh, 
his co-part and that um, not only in America, but especially on the south side of Chicago, which is heavily African-American and an Hispanic base. Um, they both stated this thing is only right to live their story through baseball and play the way that they know how to play and to play the way that we do, meaning uh, black people with a sense of style and pizzazz. Now, looking at the numbers, just 7.2% of players in the major league opening day rosters this year were of uh, considered uh, black or African descent. Now, this number is skewed because oftentimes the uh, players of African descent from the Dominican Republic and some of the islands are considered Hispanic um, versus Afro-Hispanic, but that's a topic for another day. Um, now, getting back to these numbers again, which are skewed, um, that 7.2 was down from 7.6 in 2021. Now, you can see that this percentage has fallen consistently since Major League Baseball's all-time high of 18% uh, players of African descent in 1981. And these statistics are coming from the Society of American Baseball Research. Again, I'd like to point out these, the, excuse me, the, the statistics are skewed because, again, players from the uh, Caribbean or Latin America who are of African descent oftentimes do not get included in this count. So, for example, David Ortiz won't be considered a player of African descent per Major League Baseball or uh, Ramon, or excuse me, Pe the Martinez brothers, Pedro and his brother, Ramon. Uh, some people didn't consider them of African descent by clearly by looking at them. You can tell that they were. Again, this is a discrepancy uh, within Major League Baseball's uh, how they're gathering the statistics. So back on Chicago South Side, where the White Sox Stadium is located, Anderson and Harrison have one major goal to show that black kids as well as Hispanic kids that baseball can be cool. Um, they are very aware of what comes with the things that they do. Um, Harrison and Anderson both said, and particularly Anderson, who is known for his back, his back flips and flamboyant base running. Um, he also said there's a lot of kids watching, and that's why he does it. He wants to make sure he leaves the right message for them and also lead them in the right direction that they can play baseball with some style and flair. Um, Anderson is known for the passion in which he plays with on the field, and he was an early advocate for bat flips, where, again, a lot of people um, criticize that because it's against traditional baseball culture. Now, Harrison, who joined the White Sox this year after spending 2021 with the Nationals and A's, has a motor that goes all the time. When you go back to opening day weekend uh, this year in Detroit, he had a triple and then a double in the, in the spacious uh, Chimer Chimerica Park. He then popped off the bag with excitement each time. So they're giving reference to his uh, base running steals. Remember, we talked about how the Negro League style of play used uh, base running, um, tight outfielders to try to throw runners out in the infield and also give flair to the fans when they were backtracking for fly balls and made it look more uh, appealing to the audience. And then just playing with a cultural flair that individuals of African descent usually bring to everything they do, including sports. So when he would run the bases, he would um, slide and pop up and sometimes do hand gestures, maybe a little shoulder shimmy, a little dance, um, just to show his excitement. Oftentimes in baseball, this is looked at um, as – demeaning your peers you're supposed to do your job and not say anything and if you do demean your peers it's within the unwritten rules of baseball that you get hit or the, the opposing pitcher will come at you which then goes into one of the other uh, unwritten rules which leads to a bench clearing brawl again these are baseball's unwritten rules that are based off european male hegemony and need to be uh excluded because they keep out um other cultures now, both players' views on outward emotion as a way to connect with young fans on a White Sox team aiming to defend its 2021 American League Central Crown after winning 93 games um, with one of the sports' most dynamic rosters last season. Uh, when more people are tuning into games and seeing people that rep represent them playing with a flair and energy, it has a heavy influence, said Ken Williams. Now, Ken Williams is the White Sox executive vice president, and he's just one of four people of color running a major league team. Representation for Anderson 
comes and seeing players doing the kind of things that brought him to baseball after growing up focusing on basketball in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. So again, he's paying homage not only to his culture, the Negro leagues, and showing kids that they can't bring the style of play that is infused and permeated basketball, football to the baseball uh, diamond. Going back to Mr. Harrison, his roots in the game run deep. He has an uncle, John Shelby, that played 10 years in the majors while his brother Vince did the same in the minors. Now, for both of these young men, including Anderson, it's been it's long been about more than this one day for them um, coming together, being an African-American second base and shortstop duo. Um, during his seventh season with the White Sox, he has focused on teaching a new generation about the contributions of black baseball stars in the former Negro National League, as well as the Negro League, and creating new opportunities for young fans in Chicago, and particularly on the South Side. Um, Anderson has started a charitable foundation called Anderson's League of Leaders, which has a mission to build leadership characteristics in youth who are affected by uh, violence, um, either gang or in the community, uh, within um, the South Side Corridor of Chicago. In 2018, during a series against the Kansas City Royals, Anderson took a group of young Chicago um, African-American kids to the Negro League Baseball Gym in Kansas City. Now, the following year, he did the same thing for the National Center of Civil and Human Rights in Atlanta. So, again, he's taking kids from the south side of Chicago and exposing them to a culture of baseball so they can see past greats at the Negro League uh, Museum and also taking them to the Center for Civil Rights in Atlanta to show them outside of baseball, too, what you can contribute outside of your particular sport. In 2020, Anderson posted photos from Chicago to his Instagram while attending protests following George Floyd's death. Now, we've talked about this in multiple episodes, how the sports community as a whole um, or members of the African diaspora within the sports community have galvanized around this topic and came not only to support, but to show uh, uh, feedback in regards to letting people know vocally that it's okay to support your own. Uh, we saw the um, migration back to historically black college football recently and what Coach Sanders is doing and elevating the SWAC and MEAC conferences in regards to FCS football. And now we see other athletes coming to take their part in his social activism as well. And Anderson was uh, didn't want to be left out as he is a part of the movement too. Now there's a synergy between him and Harrison and a team um, – that they wear where they play out on the south side is like they're a representation of the south side of Chicago. Now, um, with them together, they're fostering diversity in baseball, and it's also a priority for a White Sox franchise. Um, in 2007, the Chicago White Sox established a program called Amateur City Elite, which has provided over 230 scholarships since its inception to residents of the south side. Now, Amateur City Elite's goals are to reverse the declining interest in baseball among black players. They also want to gain exposure for young ball players in underserved communities among college recruiters and scouts. And finally, create a program that prepares each participant to see their life beyond the diamond. So the Chicago White Sox has invested heavily within their community, again, sparking back ties to the Chicago Defender and the great Negro League blames that were played on the South Side. So hopefully with this, this will start a downward uh, effect where these scholarships are players and are not only going to um, predominantly white institutions, but historically black colleges, universities as well, increasing the pool of uh, minority or individuals of the African diaspora in the baseball community. Um, this will again, build up to more people in the major leagues. So hopefully one day uh, the number of 18% uh, participation in 1981 can be uh, superseded and maybe get to 30 or 40%. I'm Jamar Harper. This is Sports 101. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about um, this African-American shortstop and second base duo and more on the culture of baseball.
Please stop and listen because this important message may directly apply to you or someone dear to you. Several thousand African American former full time CPS teachers were unfairly terminated starting in the mid 90s and continuing to the 2000s. If you are one of those many former CPS teachers who was unjustly terminated, or if you are the immediate relative of a now deceased, unjustly terminated former CPS teacher, you may may qualify to participate in a lawsuit at no upfront cost to you. Please call 773-580-7183 immediately for more information. That's 773-580-7183. Do not delay. Act today because time is of the essence. That's 773-580-7183. See me, see me, see me, see my dark skin and my kinky hair, see me, don't see past me, don't see through me, see me, see my tan skin and my curly hair, see me, don't see past me, don't see through me. See me. See my face wet with tears from years of oppression. See my hands weathered and worn from decades of pulling myself up through your society. See my feet split from centuries of walking your delicate line. See me. See me. See me. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. Welcome back. I'm Jamar Harp, and this is Sports 101, the show that discusses sport beyond the X's and O's. We like to talk about the game from a people, places, and cultural perspective. We also look at the game through the historic lens of history in the past, present, and the making. Please make sure you get social with Sports 101 and a litany of other shows on Sports on Chicago by following Sports on Chicago on social media. Sports on Chicago can be found on Twitter at Sports on CHI. Facebook at Sports Zone Chicago and Instagram at Sports Zone Chicago. Remember, subscribe to the YouTube channel, search Sports Zone Chicago, but more importantly, download the Sports Zone Chicago app. The Sports Zone Chicago app can be found in the iTunes, Google Play, and Amazon stores. Now, at the beginning of this week's episode, we talked about um, the dynamic uh, duo of Harrison and Anderson, shortstop and second base for Chicago White Sox, on um, the African American. Um, duo, double play duo in Major League Baseball. 
Now we're going to move into our next part, which is changing the culture of baseball. With Tim Anderson at shortstop and Josh Harrison at second base, the Chicago White Sox have a chatty, energetic infield. Um, players this season uh, during camp said it's going to be loud up the middle on the White Sox infield, and they're going to have a lot of fun. Um, Harrison said between him and Anderson, um, he doesn't know if either one of them will ever shut up in regards to just talking back and forth on the field, uh, excuse me, on the diamond, singing songs to each other, and just, you know, keeping each other camaraderie up. Um, Harrison has some hitting to do if he's going to convince uh, Leland and the White Sox fans that he's the right guy to plug into the team's vacant second base job. But what was apparent from his first day with the White Sox in spring training was he'd be a good fit the team from the clubhouse culture standpoint. And the White Sox have a team that's not a traditional team. Um, they have a, a mix, a lot of different cultures and a lot of personalities and their style of play and the way they act, again, is counter to the anti uh, or is anti to the baseball culture, which is based off of old European male uh, hegemony. Um, all his teammates say he's a hardworking guy who's earned rave reviews every stop of his major league career. Now, early out, um, you know, Harrison played a lot of different positions. He played third base, played a little outfield, and finally settled at second base. Um, a lot of his teammates say he's something else. Um, he's a game changer type of player. Um, he's even played a small role in helping the mentality and attitude thrive on the south side long before he put on a White Sox jersey because, again, being of African descent and playing, uh, even if he wasn't a White Sox, people in that community could relate to him because he looked like them. Now, the White Sox have been at the forefront of baseball's have fun revolution with Anderson as the obvious poster child. Now, again, this have fun revolution, bat flipping, dancing while you're running the bases, um, playing uh, with flair, uh, being aggressive, stealing bases, trying to make the other team look bad, um, is frowned upon by the establishment. Now, Anderson set the sport on fire with his bat flip her around the world in 2019. And he said not longer after that, he wanted to be this generation's Jackie Robinson. And what he meant was he wanted to be the Jackie Robinson when it came to doing away with the game's uh, stogic unwritten rules and breaking what he has called the have fun barrier since they're the have fun team. Now, let's get, get some video right here. And you can see this bat flip and what transpired after it, and I want to unpack it when the video is done. This is Jamar Harp, and you tune in at Sports 101. Game on a 3-2 pitch, leading off the ninth. I love this kid, man. I really do. He's just fun to watch, man. He Collins at second. Tim grounds a slider through the right-hand side. Collins waved around third. Here comes Zach, throw to the plate, is offline. Tim's into second base, and seven did it again. Visibly less. That ball's cracked into right center field. Straw is back at the wall. Hey, a good start. Tim Anderson rushes up. We had a little dust up in Chicago after Tim Anderson absolutely tattooed this ball. Through his bat, him and his buddy Yonder are screaming. Yalmer, I apologize, are screaming at each other, having fun. Maldonado's like, are you serious? Hey, coach, did you see what he just did to us? Did you see? He had fun. Carly Thurs like, you son of a bitch. Don't ever celebrate a home run off me again. Maldonado's like, we're going to hit you. He's like, I don't care. I got the home run boat. Next time up, kabam, hits him. Tim Anderson bat flips the hit by pitch, badass, and just says, yeah, we're good. We're good. I'll go to first. Hey, listen, I ain't charging. We're good. We good. Hey, nice pitch, man. Good job hitting me. Why don't you better than me giving on, hitting another home run off you? And everyone clears the benches because well, was such a big deal. Everyone's yelling and screaming. Jose Abreu says we need Tim Anderson to steal a base right here. It's still a tie game in a sixth inning, so I'm just gonna take care of that. Renteria pushes the other coaches like get out like this is fine. Leave some space because he sees this scene right here. A lot of blue. A lot of blue. And Tim Anderson stuck in the middle just getting chirped at every direction. Renteria did not like that. We got this dude, Phil Meyer on the Royals. I didn't know who this guy was, but he's now the biggest loser in baseball. Oh, good job. Oh, good job. Good. All Tim Anderson did was hit a home run, then get hit by pitch, 
And this guy's like, yeah, keep talking. Oh, yeah, you're so cool. Oh, yeah. I hate you, Phil Meyer. I didn't know your name. Yost is like, shut up, guys. Leave him alone. Renteria says, yeah, shut up. I already told you. Leave my guy alone. Shut the hell up. Yost is like, hey, I tell my guys to shut up. You don't tell my guys to shut up. These coaches like, I, he's like, I got you, coach. I'm the biggest guy on the team. They're like, yo, you're too big. Get away from the front lines. They're going to think you're fighting. Jose's like, you're not part of this. You're not part of this. We need you to steal a base. Your go ahead run. I got you. You ain't moving. Joe West says, calm down, Renteria. All his friends say, well, coach, you were really fired up there. Wow, you okay? You were really fired up. Wow, cool stuff. They threw Tim Anderson out of this game. Makes no sense. He got hit by a pitch after hitting a home run. They threw him out. All the Royals just look like idiots in this scenario, in my opinion. Oh, you better go sit your ass down. And Jose Brady's like, what the fuck? If I knew you were getting thrown out, I would have just let you go. All right, so again, I'm packing that video. Um, you see um, Tim Anderson hit the home run. And with the... I never saw a bat flip that big, but again, it's not breaking any rules, but unwritten or unspoken rules of showing up your opponent. Oftentimes, a person breaks that rule and shows him up, and he's from another culture, is looked at as even worse. So you can see him rounding the bases. Um, other videos show some hand gestures and some shoulder shimmying. And again, the, the rule is if you hit a home run and you show up the pitcher, the next time he has to hit you. So these, again, these pitches are 90 miles an hour and up. So that, you know, that ball hurts. So he took the pitch, got hit, going to first base. Everyone comes out. He still gets throughout the game for what reason we don't know. Because again, usually the umpire throws the pitcher out if he's going to hit him. Because all the batter did was do his job and hit the ball out. Now going in further to that, we're going to have some more um, information right here on uh, the bat flip debate. And I'll show you a video of individuals talking about this and you can get some more info on it yourself. So, Mark DeRosa wants so to make a statement. I, I don't want to necessarily have to make like this huge statement, but yeah. I feel like we've been given a platform working here as former players to kind of, we have to have an opinion one way or the other. And, and, and I hate when like things like the Tim Anderson thing, it happens and we're sitting, we're sitting up here trying to play both sides of the fence. And I went home yesterday, and mm -hmm. I was, like, stewing about it. Still? Yeah, was I was. Not at Tim Anderson, just the whole idea of what's right and what's wrong. Right. Okay? So I want to call for my first soapbox of the year, and I'm going to come with what I believe to be. Okay. I'm going to speak for what I believe to be. Okay. From the heart. From the heart for about 99% of guys who ever put on a big league uniform. Thank you, Jordan. Okay? Okay? I kind of, you hear me talk a lot about taking stock. Every night I brush my teeth, I kind of take do you, stock. Do you want the American flag? No, I don't need the American okay. flag. I kind of take stock of where I, where I am on the totem pole of life. Okay. Okay? I feel like I know the game pretty good. Played it a long time. Know how hard it is to get to the big leagues. Stay. Be asked to produce. Be asked to ride pine. Be asked to study pitchers. Study coaches, study trainers. I've seen the game from a lot of different angles, okay? So I feel like I want to represent the former players and, and what I believe to be about 90% of current players. See, I, 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 I get it, Al. We're going to have Whit Merrifield come on, and we're going to break down and do an awesome skybox. And I read a bunch of articles on him last night, and I kept coming back to two words in every article about this kid. It was level-headed and humble, okay? I'm in on the swag. I'm in on the personality. I'm in on the charisma. I think it's what makes the clubhouse and team successful. But at the end of the day, at the core of it, I want you to be level-headed and humble. I've met Tim Anderson. He came in here. He was level-headed and humble, if I'm not mistaken. Right, Ralph Lowe? Yeah. He, he was, was awesome. He was great. Okay? So he knows how hard it is to get to the big leagues. He's finding out how hard it is to stay in the big leagues. He's gotten off to a hot start. But I have a guy right here that I didn't play with that busted his tail every time, competed, respected the game, respected the way he went about it. And I'm here to tell you, America, whoever's listening, <laughs> no, get Eddie Alstrom off, all right? Get him off. 
that if Tim Anderson flipped his bat on Al Leiter like that, he would have 99 out of 100 guys blessing to undress Tim Anderson the next time he came up. And if people have a problem with that, I have a problem with that. I'm in on let the kids play, but can someone tell the entire, if we're gonna change everything, if we're going that route, then can someone tell the players to all back each other? Because I get some guys on Twitter saying, I dig it. I get some guys on Twitter saying, I hate it. So if the moniker is we're gonna change and we're gonna let these kids play and Ken Griffey Jr. half backwards, then all the players need to be on board and there needs to be stiffer punishments for throwing at someone, throwing behind them. Like the lines are completely blurred right now. And I feel like Tim Anderson should have gotten hit in the tuchus and walked to first. He should have known it was coming. And as a former player, we don't want to sit here and sound old school, archaic, whatever the word is, the machismo thing. Too it's late. not about machismo. It's about respect for how hard it is to get here, stay here, grind here. Bottom line, Paul Konerko, game two, 2005 World Series. You hit a grand slam, you want to come out and dip that bat in gold, I'm in. Pesednik, walk-off game, 2005 World Series, dip it in gold, I'm in. Throw it through old Comiskey, it's guaranteed right now, whatever. I feel attacked. Why are you bringing up 2005? But April 15th, second or third inning, to take your bat and chuck it like that, you're getting drilled. I'm sorry. All right, so right there, folks, you saw it all. Um, him, himself, along with about 90% of other um, former Major League Baseball players um, are fine with the Ken Griffey Jr. Again, look at the reference he used, hat backwards, culture, but uh, you cannot, you have to be humble and respect the game and respect the history of the game. And if the history of the game is of a racial uh, or racist nature, then how can you expect to impose these values on people from different cultures? And particularly when, when you look at the African diaspora, um, it sounds like, you know, a remnants is of be a, be a, be a, be a good uh, Negro, be a good uh, slave, o -o obey your master. Um, if you get an opportunity, be humble. You have that opportunity. Uh, don't celebrate. Just be happy you're there and go sit down. Uh, so that's essentially what he was saying. Um, also, um, again, uh, I don't see how that can be imposed, especially when you look at the history of African people in America. Um, those same sentiments is basically what people have been fighting for uh, since uh, our duration in this country having the respect that uh, if I show passion or emotion or excitement, it cannot be I'm disrespecting something and I'm not humble. Um, so now getting back to the marketing, which was also addressed in the video, the Chicago White Sox marketing department saw obvious opportunity to make money off of this and took Anderson's phrase, change the game and put it on billboards uh, t television commercials, T-shirts, and the players did the rest. Now, um, the Chicago White Sox roster has a lot of characters. They have a self-proclaimed big bastard in their starting uh, rotation of pitchers. They have a profanity spewing closer, a third baseman who does his own music videos, a left fielder that doesn't like buttons, and a bleach blonde center fielder, and uh, Mr. Batflip Anderson himself. So with all that, all these players will be considered not humble because the things they're doing, they're not respecting the game. To respect the game, you have to be very traditional. You just play your position. You don't show emotion and go sit down because showing emotion back then can get you hurt, especially if you were a player of African descent. Now, all these characters break the mold again of the traditional baseball culture, uh, which fits right in with the White Sox and their South Side demographic. Um, along with Harrison, who is, again, new to the club this year. He even said last year when he watched the White Sox and scouting and just, you know, uh, regular games, he said they, get, they were having fun. Um, and he noticed that all the time, especially when he played against them. Um, now, Harrison said he's going to be me wherever he goes. 
but he know BME will be definitely different with the White Sox because it feels like home. Because again, uh, he has uh, more players that look like him on the team, and then the fan base and location of uh, Kaminsky. Now the White Sox culture is not only with him; it's just a team wide thing. And it's despite the fears that that he snuff it out. Uh, excuse me, I said Leland. I'm sorry, Tony Larusa. Um, who was the skipper, he's helped this fun style culture flourish. And the most repeated compliment he received from his players last season, and that he allowed them to be themselves when they thought since he's an older guy, he coached in the 80s, he's going to come in and, and stifle the movement that they had going. Um, Anderson was the focal point of all these concerns, uh, especially the fans' concerns about what him and LaRusa get together. And a shortstop uh, even admitted to not being on board with the hire initially because he fell prey to the uh, rumors that LaRusso were making change and he couldn't do this and that and impose new rules in the clubhouse to take their um, urban fun culture away. But it, obviously that was not the case, and the two worked well together. Uh, LaRusso realized what a critical element not only Anderson was, but allowing this style of play. Um, and he wanted the team success and um, Anderson's success to continue. And Anderson also appreciated LaRusso's willingness to step in to a culture they had already established and go with that instead of trying to dictate a new one. Um, again, dictate a new one would, again, show that he is an old baseball guy who is, you know, not the new generation Ken Griffey hat backwards um, type of coach, but more of a traditional baseball purist who stood for the culture, and you cannot disrespect the culture. Um, however, La Russa got it right by going with Anderson and his teammates um, and how they identify and put a spotlight on the south side of Chicago and um, Negro League Baseball. And remember, this was building before Anderson flipped his back and stepped in the national stage, but that was just a moment that everyone took notice and used that to galvanize the cry of he's disrespecting baseball by his antics. Um, there was another bat flip in the White Sox extra inning loss to the Royals um, on April 17th of 2019. That next day, the team was in Detroit uh, when Anderson was hit with a suspension for what baseball called a racially charged word while yelling at Royals pitcher Brad Keller, who hit him with a pitch, forcing the benches to clear. Now, Anderson, the suspension was handed down by the league office, and what he said is they had failed to ignore some of the differences in using the word that come with people being from different walks of life. I ain't black people being allowed to say that word, not with a hard ER, but finishing in A. And Anderson pointed out that the lack of diversity within Major League Baseball management uh, affected their decision to suspend him. Now, many people, including Harrison, who was playing for the Tigers at the time and already a two-time All-Star, um, saw in Anderson what he was looking for in a ball player. And a lot of people tried to mimic this cause, again, by playing uh, with your stirrups out, pants pulled up high, stealing bases, aggressive base running, um, trying to throw people out from the outfield and just playing with flair and style which is traditional, a Negro League baseball style of play. Harrison also, he pulled Anderson to the side of Detroit and told him he loved the way he played and don't change for anybody. Now, he didn't expect to be with him next year, but again, that's how fate turns out. Um, you don't have to explain yourself to anybody because at the end of the day, how you play on the field is an expression of you. And Harrison and Anderson both you know, rely to this quote that um, Harrison stated, and again, what shows their bond together is two individuals of the African diaspora trying to show their love and passion for baseball and spread it within their own community. Guys come from different walks of life, but as a guy that plays free out of the field and free of myself, it's encouraging and refreshing to see other people play with that. I don't want to call it a reckless abandon, but they play with no fear. I don't care what you think of me. I have to play the way the game. I have to play the game the way I play the game. And again, um, Anderson and Harrison both feel this way. And a lot of the things they do are scrutinized. You're going to see a quick video right here of Harrison getting a hit and high stepping to second base. And again, this 
is showing up the other team or other culture, what I believe it is, the implied meaning. And if you show up uh, the European male, then obviously he's going to resort back in violence. And that's what baseball is playing out on a micro level. So I'm going to show you, uh, again, another example of this Negro League style of play that they're bringing in Major League Baseball and the south side of Chicago. And that one is smoked to left field. Heading over there is Ramirez. He's going to play it off the base of the wall. Harrison is going to hustle into second, and he's got a one-out double. How about Jay Hay? High stepping it into second with a dub sack. Now, normally you don't see baseball players high step in the second base, but again, um, with his flair and style of play, um, that's how Harrison plays the game. This type of base burning, however, is indicative of the Negro League style of play, both the Negro National League and the old Negro League. Um, but it's not uh, viewed as a baseball culture by traditionalists and, again, is associated with the Ken Griffey Jr. hat backward new style of baseball. So basically what I take from that is don't do any urban things. And we know urban is a code word for black or you know, acting black. So Anderson has decided long before talking with Harrison that he was going to play that way and keep having fun. And Harrison decided that before we talked to Anderson. So putting the two of them together, they're going to overdose on a clown. Now his entire outlook on life was altered by the death of his best friend in 2017. And he said he was going to enjoy every moment the only way he knew how. Um, being transferred for a quieter guy in his early days and his big league career to a personality in the face of a franchise and a movement within America's national pastime is a great deal for Anderson. He accepts that challenge. And again, his goal, along with Harrison, is to show uh, young uh, Africans within the diaspora in the United States and throughout the world that they can play baseball. There's a history of them, their people playing baseball, and they can make it fun again. In the years that's followed, Anderson won a batting title. Um, he's won a silver slugger, uh, went to the All-Star game, hit the unforgettable walk-off home run you saw in the highlights in the Field of Dreams game. They have the White Sox, uh, take the White Sox from Rebuilders to a World Series contender. Now he's got one of the guys who helped prop him up during his emergence of one of baseball's brightest stars next to him in the south side infield. This keystone combo in the White Sox infield is ready to change the game all over again, this time as a part of what the White Sox hope is a championship formula. For him to get here and see how his personality is a lot more and to see what type of guy he is, he definitely fits in and definitely – is a vet that they would need in the clubhouse, Anderson said of Henderson, Harrison. He's going to be vocal. He's going to tell you about what he sees, and that's what we do here. We're honest. We don't sugarcoat anything. We make sure everybody's held accountable, and we have fun. When they reached out to him, the White Sox did to Harrison, he said uh, he knew that was a team for him because uh, he had got to see them play recently, and again, his conversations with Anderson about he loved the way they play, keep that style up, et cetera, and now he's on the team. In closing, I'd like to leave you with a few quick examples or a few quick closing thoughts. Baseball should be played with fire and passion just like any other sport. Um, these unwritten rules to protect European male hegemony um, and acquiesce to, to them in that culture push other cultures away from the game. Uh, by like, saying that uh, showing enthusiasm, you're not humble. Um, that's very arrogant to say to a person. And they're not respecting the game. Like they didn't work hard to get to the big leagues themselves. Um, again, being hit by pitchers, uh, by, sh by showing them up, by getting hits or home runs and flipping your back um, does not encourage um, bringing in other cultures as well too because from the outside and it can look like if a player uh, from the African diaspora does something well and uh, celebrates, he gets chastised by getting hit with the baseball the next time he's at bat. Um, now, these trailblazers who are invoking this style of play from our old Negro National Leagues and a, a, a Negro League are opening a new generation of African-Americans in this fast, wide-open Negro League style of play. 
I hope it continues. Um, my big uncle, John, uh, Sean Gibson, excuse me, uh, is on the Josh Gibson product. So you can make sure you check him out and his work and keeping uh, baseball alive in the African diaspora community within the United States. Again, you thank you for tuning in to another week's episode of Sports 101. Please make sure you get social with my show and a litany of other shows on Sports on Chicago by following Sports on Chicago on social media. Sports on Chicago, we find on Twitter at Sports on CHI, Facebook at Sports on Chicago, and Instagram at Sports on Chicago. Remember, subscribe to the YouTube channel, search Sports on Chicago, but more importantly, we need everyone to download the Sports on Chicago app. The Sports Zone Chicago app can be found on iTunes, Google Play, and Amazon stores. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Jamar Harp, and this is another episode of Sports 101. We'll see you next week at our regular scheduled time, 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern. And I'm gone.